Rebuilding the Stuart 10 V steam engine part 15. Completing the fitting of the steam chest to the second cylinder in exactly the same way as shown in the previous episode. Then I connect a second compressed air supply to test run the engine on both cylinders. But first of all, it's Christmas Day 2021. I'm voicing over and editing this video. And here in England, it is currently 9 o'clock in the morning. I'll tell you what I miss about Christmas these days. The children. Just like I did when I was a child, I woke up very early to rush downstairs to see what Father Christmas had brought me. And in my childhood, Father Christmas always brought me the things that I wanted. I came from a working class background in a northern town in England. And thanks to my parents and my grandmother, my childhood was everything that I wanted it to be. Not many presents were forthcoming at any other times of the year other than Christmases and birthdays. And before I was old enough to tell them what I would like for Christmas, for instance, as I got older, I really wanted a record player, so that was a Christmas present. But without asking, my parents always bought me the gifts at Christmas that I really did like. Sadly, the toys of childhood are long gone, but they've been replaced with big boys toys. Back to the job, I've cleaned out the gland using a needle file to get rid of any debris in there, and I've fitted an O-ring. After finishing the gland packing with some Teflon coated yarn, I lubricated the valve spindle, and in this clip I'm tightening the gland nut in place. Same principle as with the other one, tighten the gland nut and then back it off with the spanner. If the gland packing is too tight, there'll be a lot of friction and you can damage the valve rod by scoring it. This is one of the eccentric sheaves and it spent some time in my tumbler polisher having a good clean. And look at this, the media that I use in the polisher is ground up walnut shells and a piece of the media has found its way into the oil hole in the eccentric strap. When I looked at the other eccentric this was the same, so I used a pin to poke the media out of the holes. After re-threading the eccentric sheaves 6BA, I'm fitting a 6BA grub screw. And just as with the other cylinder, I'm checking that the valve moves equidistantly over the ports. In this clip, if you look carefully, you can see that there's a very small piece of the silicone O-ring on the thread. It's not a problem, because the O-ring is only a secondary line of defence. The Teflon coated yarn would seal the valve spindle by itself. Time now to do a bit of gasket fitting. These are the gaskets that are supplied by Stuart Models, I thought I'd buy some. After the steam chest cover gasket was in place, it was time to fit the steam chest cover. A while back, I bought this thing off eBay. The lines on the side are where I was testing my ability at lining for my traction engine, so don't look too closely at those. The unit itself is very useful for running multiple engines, or for allowing multiple cylinders to be fed with their own air supply. As before, I temporarily fitted a quarter by 40 double union into the steam chest, and because it's quarter by 40 and not quarter by 32, I could only turn it a couple of turns. But by the time the silicone rubber piping is pushed on, everything's okay. In this clip, I'm checking the timing of the cylinder on the right hand side. I've turned off the compressed air supply to the left cylinder, so I can hear the admission and exhaust by rotating the flywheel and listen to the sound that the right hand cylinder is making as the valve admits and exhausts the steam. The slide valve setting on this engine is particularly good. The high point of the cam lobe is at exactly 90 degrees to the crank pin, and it works fine. I turned on the compressed air to the other cylinder and ran the engine a little bit faster. Here, to make sure there aren't any problems, I'm applying some more lubricating oil. Lubrication and type of lubrication is very important. Here I'm using ordinary lubricating oil. Here I'm using steam oil from my other oil can. The compressed air supply is now turned off and I'm rotating the engine in reverse. And this just about fills up the cylinders with oil and you can see what happens when I run the engine. A lot of oil comes out of both of the exhaust flanges. This is a sure sign that the engine has got plenty of oil in the cylinders. And you can hear the difference, it's starting to run a lot more smoothly. The two small bolts at each end that hold the eccentric rods so the valve forks are just ordinary small 7BA bolts. These are no good at all, but at this moment in time I can't find any other suitable bolts, I may have to make some. The bolts in this area need to have parallel shanks to act as a bearing surface. 
This is the part of the rebuild where I run the engine on compressed air for quite a while and once again I'm applying even more oil to the engine. It's not a new engine but it's had major surgery and quite a few of the parts need to be re-run in or re-broken in. I think it's time for me to go, it's Christmas morning as I said earlier and I need to have some breakfast. I'll be spending the rest of the day with my eldest daughter and family and I'm looking forward to the response of my grandchildren when I give them the presents. I'll leave you with the engine running to the end of the video. I thank everyone for all the Christmas wishes, I was quite overwhelmed. And I do of course especially thank my Patreon supporters for their kind support, which makes it possible for me to make these videos. To everyone out there, have a great day. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.